About a month ago, I competed in my school's biggest hackathon, which happened to be AI-themed. And if you don't know what a hackathon is, it's a software competition where you have to make a software. In our case, it was about a week. And I'm going to tell you a few lessons I learned and some things that I wish I would have known going into this. And overall, it was just a really fun project. I assembled a team with four of my friends together, and we made a, we used GPT-3 to analyze your tweets, and it would tell you which tweets it deemed to be unprofessional looking to an employer. So it basically clean up your social media for you. That was our point, especially for college students coming into the professional world looking for internships. They don't want the things they said in the past to you know, come back and hurt them. That was the whole idea behind our project. However, there are some lessons I learned that I want to impart to you just in case you're about to go to your next AI hackathon or just a hackathon in general. I would say the first thing is to prioritize going for a more visual based project. What I mean is that, for example, in the world of AI, you can do so many different kinds of projects. You can do natural language based, so text based. That's what our group did. You can do, I guess, computer vision. You can do games. You, I would just say that in general, I would prioritize doing more visual products. So what that looks like is I know a few teams did gesture recognition. So that's obviously a computer vision problem. And for the purposes of, of a competition like this, where the judges are probably visual learners, and it's better to describe concepts by showing them to do gestures rather than to show them what a vector is with text embeddings. Like they're not going to they're going to they're gonna understand the visual project more and probably give you more points for it. That's just been my experience overall with that. The second thing I would say is that the UI and the UX of your project are super, super important. And for the sake of the competition, they're more important than the back end. The reason is because most likely your judges are not going to care one bit, one ounce about your back end code. Even though in real life, the back end is obviously more important than the front end because that's where the business value of it lies. For the competition, it's the inverse, where you know your judges are going to immediately look at your project and they're going to make a first impression on it based on you know just as simple as how cool of a template you used or how clean of a design it is, which it can honestly make you look more professional or less professional, and it could be the thing that deters you from rewards or any awards or anything like that. So the lesson here is just, you know, I know we had a specific guy in our team who only did front end. He designed our website in Figma. He then mocked it up in HTML. We didn't even need to use any templates, but if you're not as skilled in front end, I'd recommend using a bootstrap template. That's pretty clean and pretty recognizable. You can use uh, Tailwind. That's another, um, my, team's using that. my team's using that for a different project for school. So just make sure to prioritize the UI and just presentation. And not only the presentation of the app itself, but the presentation of what you're going to present to the judges. Make a slide deck and use readable graphics. Don't put too many texts on the slides. You know, those things, those presentation skills are going to be really important. And I think that this also brings me closer to the broader point of how important your presentation is to you winning the award. I would say that half the battle is making the app, but the other half of the battle is what you say to the judges in those few minutes you have at the end of the competition. Because you can make the best looking app, but if you can't communicate it well, the judges are not gonna understand it, they're not gonna give you points, and they're just not gonna give you what you deserve, you know? So make sure you prioritize, prioritize the presentation and that you make sure people on your team are able to speak well and clearly to the judges. The next point I have is Understand that the level of altruism your project creates, the, basically how, how well your project helps humanity, that's a big thing the judges are looking for. And that you should really consider having your project serve some kind of need that helps people. And I would say that the more altruistic your project is, the better chances you're going to have success. For example, the top winners, at least at my competition, I can show you, what, you can look at them on the screen right now. They were, there were two gesture recognition projects for people with disabilities. The top winner made an app to help people fight off opioid addiction using AI. The, another runner up was an autonomous ocean cleaning boat drone to help clean the oceans. There was a cybersecurity threat detection. There was a Discord bot that helped you make friends online. And there was a, there was one where that generated running routes with AI voice recognition. And even if you don't think your project helps people as much, say if you're in, if you're doing a financial product, 
maybe you want to market as this product is going to help secure people's financial futures who don't have access to the level of wealth management that wealthier people have. Like, you know, you want to market your idea as something that has a lot of altruism to it. Just because there, there's probably going to be some slight politics you'll have to deal with with the judges, to be honest. And having your project be altruistic is really going to improve your game. And the last point I have is to make sure you go for the specific challenges of the company that the companies have. So the companies that sponsor your events, they're going to have some specific challenges. I think for ours, for our hackathon, we had Comcast sponsor us because Comcast is near our school. And they had a, a challenge where if you did your project... If you did your project as a gesture-based recognition, then you can apply for their specific award and win it. And, you know, the teams that walked away with prizes, a lot of them focused on that, which is something... I mean, our team, we went more NLP, which is obviously... In, re in real life, NLP and computer vision are just as important. They're intertwined. I'd say they're one of the same problem because you need natural language to describe computer vision and you need computer vision to read natural language. But that's, that's the whole different topic. But the point is, you want to go for some specific challenges. That's going to increase your chance of coming out of the hackathon with a, with a prize. If you do go for the more general prizes, know that you are less likely to win them and that you're going to have an enormous amount of competition for them. And you probably, I mean, you, it's going to be really hard to come out winning, obviously, the top award. Even if you have a arguably better project than another team, if they present it better than you, if they maybe have connections with the judges or if... There are other variables that you have to account for that you can't really predict. So the point is, just go for the challenges of the sponsors or do their little challenges. That'll help rap build some rapport with your team. But yeah, these are my tips for your first AI hackathon that I wish I had known coming into it. It was overall a really fun experience. I put a lot of late nights, a lot of energy drinks into this with my team. It was so fun. And I highly recommend it for anyone who wants to test out their software or ML skills like I did here. I made a ton of other videos about GPT-3 as well. I've, I've made so many videos to the point where I feel like I need to actually learn how it works instead of just talking about it. But yeah, check them out on my channel. Just read them. And yeah, thank you for watching this video. I hope this was useful to you. And good luck on your next hackathon. See you.